So the first thing you're going to need is latex and I use the one from Nigel Beauty and I got a tile from the hardware store because it's really easy to put the latex down on. So what you're going to do is place the size of the wound that you need. For me it's just uh, a chest wound about the size of a fist. So I kind of lined out what I was going to do in the latex on the tile. After I did this I went ahead and started smoothing it down so that I can create some edges in order to also give myself a base to build things up on top of. Once you get the shape and size that you need, you're gonna take some cotton, uh, just regular cotton balls will do. You can go ahead and pull them apart or unroll them as you can see that I have done. Uh, and you're going to place them on top of your latex. This is gonna start to create body to your wound and you'll be able to build on top of it with other latex and cotton. You can also use tissue paper if you need something thinner, but I went ahead and used cotton because I needed a thicker wound. After you've got your first layer of cotton or tissue paper down, you go ahead on top of it with another layer of latex. Basically, this is gonna give you something to be able to mold and shape into the wound or the desired kind of build that you need. Um, what I like to do is I start, as you can see, go ahead and smoothing out some of the edges just to give yourself where your edges are going to be. And then you can coat the entire thing in latex just to um, be able to build it up further from there. Once you're done with this, you can take a sculpting spatula like I have here. Mine came in a set or a, a popsicle stick or even a Q-tip will work just as well. Um, and I went ahead in and started really smoothing down those edges to try and go ahead and make it look flatter and give it more of a slope into the edges instead of just a really harsh, uh, you know, mound or harsh line uh, that the cotton is going to create. So I just did that around the entire thing uh, just to start to smooth out the edges of the wood. <laughs> Once that first layer is a little bit dry, you can go ahead in with a second layer just for further buildability, kind of like I needed to do. Um, you just put down another layer of latex on top of where you're going to want that second layer to go in. And then on top of that latex, same thing, you go ahead and put the cotton or the tissue down. Now with this, you can mix your media. You can put another layer of cotton, which I did, or if you want it to be like a thicker bottom and a thinner top, you can put, you know, cotton on the bottom and then tissue paper on the top. It's really kind of your own personal preference or whatever the wound um, is called for, things like that. So mine specifically needed to be thicker, so I went ahead in with a second layer of cotton just to thicken it up. Then to seal that second layer, similar to the way you did the first one, you coat the entire thing in latex, um, again, in order to make it more moldable. And you can really start to shape your wound from here, uh, kind of like you'll see me doing. Um, I started to make it sort of shrink like this is an open chest wound specifically for me so I made the latex look more you know grotesque and kind of just really rough edges and you know uneven kind of like pieces of skin and things like that so um, definitely that latex you can use now as more of the molding tool and again you can even do this in your first layer if you're only gonna do one layer uh, I recommend too just because it makes it a lot easier to work with and the prosthetic gets um, more and more sturdy the more layers you put in. Then I let it sit overnight and I'll be back in the morning to check it. So this is what it looks like dry the next day. I preferably like to let it dry overnight uh, just to make sure it's completely solid. So then what I like to do and it's recommended to do uh, is dust it kind of with baby powder all over. Um, latex itself likes to stick a lot, especially when you're pulling it up off of the actual tile. It can stick to itself. So I dust the entire thing in a coat of baby powder just to make sure that I eliminate all of the stickiness and also so that it remains in almost the exact shape that it is now when I pull it up. Okay, so then I take that same spatula. This, um, I don't know if a popsicle stick will work for this just as well because you do need something kind of really thin. That's why I like this metal spatula. And you start going around the edges, just very gently pulling it off of the tile. Uh, as you can see, you know, in sort of a scraping motion, you can even do it with your fingernail if you're very careful. I recommend something um, very thin in order to kind of grab those edges. <laughs> Once you have loosened enough up, go ahead and grab your edges and very gently start to pull it upwards. 
as you're pulling, go ahead and put some baby powder underneath it as you're going. So that way it stays solid and it doesn't sort of try to fold in on itself or stick to itself, which again, it very much likes to do. So as you're pulling, be sure to do a little baby powder every time you pull up new latex. So pull a little baby powder, pull a little baby powder, and just repeat this very slowly until the whole prosthetic is up off the tile. Once it's completely off the tile, I just give the whole thing a good once over with baby powder in my hand, just in case there are any spots that I missed. And there it is, now you're ready to apply it. Unfortunately, I didn't get to record myself applying this to the actor because things were very hectic on set, but here's the final product after it had been painted and removed from him. And I'll include a couple of pictures of the final look for you guys. 